Once upon a time, there lived a married couple. Although they really wanted to have a baby, well, for them, it just wasn't possible. One day, his wife went to the old witch and told her she wanted a baby. Don't be sad, my dear girl. Where there's a will, there's a way. Take this seed and plant it in a pot and wait and see. You'll be surprised. His wife was very happy. She thanked her with joy. In return for her amazing favor, she gave the witch some money. Later on, she went straight home and planted the seed in a pot. With great patience, she began to wait near the pot. Soon later, a big tulip like flower began to blossom. Right that moment, she thought to herself, What a beautiful flower! With its leaves still unfolded, she reached over and kissed it. Short after, the leaves began to unfold. In the flower was a child sitting down. With great confusion, the lady picked up the tiny girl in her hand. What a tiny little child you are! Hmm, your name should be Thumbelina. The lady made Thumbelina's crib out of a walnut shell, her mattress from violet leaves, and her blanket from rose petals. Thumbelina managed to adapt to her new life with ease. At night time, she would sleep in her bed that was made just for her, and during the day, she would play on the table and sing songs. One night, while she was sleeping in her bed, an ugly frog appeared from the window. It saw the little girl sleeping in a walnut shell. Rabbit, oh my, what a tiny and beautiful girl you are. You'd make a great friend to my son. As fast as it could, the frog grabbed the walnut shell and went out the window. Right near the house was a swamp. The house in which the ugly frog and his son lived in was right here. The son of the ugly frog was just as ugly as his father. When he saw the tiny girl his father had rang him, he croaked at the top of his lungs. Grab it, grab it. Stop croaking, you're going to wake the girl up. If she wakes up, she will run away in fear, rabbit. The father and son decided to make the little girl a place where she could stay. Father Frog had a great idea. Let's place the little girl on one of the lilies over at the stream. Being surrounded with all that water, it will be impossible for her to get away. Father Frog took Thumbelina with her crib and placed it on one of the lilies. In the morning, with the sparkling light of the sun, Thumbelina woke up. When she noticed she wasn't at home and saw that she was surrounded in water, in fear she began to cry. <laughs> Where am I? Father and Sun Frog went over to get Thumbelina. Here's your new friend. I'm preparing a great new home for you. It will be in the very deep waters of the swamp. Father and son took Thumbelina's crib, made from a walnut shell, and swam off leaving her right there on the leaf. At that very moment, some red fish were swimming along, and they overheard what the ugly frog was saying. They couldn't stand the idea of an ugly swamp frog upsetting such a beautiful girl such as Thumbelina. Don't you worry, little girl. We are going to save you. All together, they chewed on the stem of the lily where she was sitting on, and they broke it. All alone now, the leaf got caught in a rip current and managed to get away. Making way on the current in her green leaf left all the birds with great admiration. How beautiful and tiny she is! As she was on her way, she passed a rather big maybug. He grabbed her as fast as he could and landed on a tree. Finding herself on a tree, Thumbelina was very frightened. What type of a bug are you? And why did you bring me here? 
I'm a bay bug, and I have never seen a bug such as yourself before, so I wanted my friends to see you. Later on, all the other May bugs sitting on the same tree came around to visit Thumbelina. Trying hard not to show it, all the May bugs were jealous of her amazing beauty. <laughs> You're a funny creature. How rickety, doesn't even have wings. How ugly, you can barely look at her face. You are free to go wherever you want. We don't want such an ugly thing being near us. Thumbelina spent the whole summer all by herself. She overcame her hunger and thirst by drinking the water of the flowers. A long time passed and the weather began to cool. Because of her summer clothes, she got cold. A field appeared from afar. The field was covered in straw. After a long walk, Thumbelina made it to the field. Under the straw, she managed to find a field rat's home. With a chance on finding some food, Thumbelina knocked on his door and asked for some barley. Kind-hearted field rat took her in. She got in that instant and ate up all the food the rat had offered. The field rat really liked Thumbelina. If you tell me a story every day, I will allow you to stay with me to the end of winter. With great satisfaction, Thumbelina accepted her offer. Today my neighbour will come by. He's in better condition than me. If you go with him, you'll be very comfortable. But keep in mind, he has very bad eyesight. You will need to tell your best fairy tales and occupy him for. Ever. A little while later, with his velvet fur on his back, appeared a mole. Thumbelina wasn't very fond with the mole, but she didn't want to disappoint him, so she agreed to sing a song for him. Fly, fly, ladybug, wedding will be tomorrow. Mommy will buy you new shoes and clothes tomorrow. Even though he had poor eyesight, the mole realized he liked Thumbelina very much and decided to take her home. I managed to come all this way by digging a hole and making a tunnel. If you like, we can go the same way and I can show you my house. Thumbelina was hesitant to go. Seeing the rat agreeing, Thumbelina accepted his offer. They managed to make their way. During this time, they saw a swallow lying down on the ground with its wings on its side and its head and feet tucked under its feathers. This bird wasn't here when I was coming. It must have just fallen through the hole. Thumbelina thought about the birds in the forest and remembered them chirping above her. She couldn't handle the sight of them being in this state and was very sad. Without the field rat or the mold seeing, she turned to the swallow and gave it a kiss. This bird could be one of the birds that was chirping during summertime. If that's so, then I owe him a lot. Come on, Thumbelina, we are waiting for you. She couldn't sleep that night. She knitted a quilt with the straw, went to the corridor and covered the swallow. She wet the mint leaf she used as a blanket and placed it over its head. Please be better soon, sweet little bird. The following day, Thumbelina went over to see the swallow and saw that its eyes were open. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to thank you. You took such good care of me. Now I will recover in no time. Once I have totally recovered, I will be able to go next to my friends in warmer countries. It's very cold outside. You should rest in your warm bed and recover at once. After Thumbelina was done giving advice to the swallow, she bring some water with the help of a flower petal and helped her drink it. And later on, listen to how she broke her wing, smashing into the bushes. The wounded swallow wasn't as fast as her friends. She was tired and so she fell. At last, spring had sprung and the sun began to warm the land once again. 
the swallow knew that it was time to say goodbye to Thumbelina. Would you like to come to the forest with me? I would have liked to come with you, but my friend the field rat would be very sad. I can't leave her. In that case, farewell, Thumbelina. Maybe someday we will meet again. With teary eyes, Thumbelina watched the swallow fly away. With summer ahead, Thumbelina's worries began to arise. It is summer now. Now that the Val the Third Mole would like to marry you, we should get some beautiful clothes together. When winter is here, be ready to live with me underground in the soil, Thumbelina. Before Thumbelina began her life underground where it was cold and dark, she went outside for the last time to see the sun. Just as she was about to enter, right above her head, she heard a bird. When she turned her head up to have a look, she saw her most loved swallow. Thumbelina told the swallow that she was being forced to marry the mole and that she had to live underground where there was no sunlight. Winter is nearly here. We are preparing to go to warmer countries. Please come with us. You've saved my life. I would like to pay you back. This time, Thumbelina accepted the swallow's offer. And off they went. Thumbelina and the swallow flew away over the forests, seas, and the mountains covered in snow. Later, the two friends arrived at warmer countries. These places were amazing. The sun was brighter and the sky was shimmery. This is my home. Please pick the best flower for yourself. This is beautiful. The swallow placed Thumbelina in a beautiful flower. Amongst all this beauty, Thumbelina was very happy. Sitting in her flower and looking at it in detail, she was mesmerized. In the flower sat a tiny man as shiny as glass. This man was the fairy of this flower. Every flower had its own fairy. He was as tall as a finger. He had shiny wings on his shoulders and a golden crown on his head. It was the first time the handsome fairy had seen a beautiful girl the same size as he was. What's your name, beautiful girl? My name is Thumbelina. The fairy took his crown off his head and placed it on Thumbelina's head. If you marry me, you will be the queen amongst all these flowers. You will live a very happy life. After having lived such cruelty, being in such beautiful environment, Thumbelina was very happy to hear such a great proposal from the very handsome fairy. The fairy held Thumbelina's hand. And right at that moment, two wings appeared on Thumbelina's shoulders. Thumbelina was now the fairy queen. Together they lived a long and happy life.